hole is basically just a really small hole. Scientists have figured out how to make them out of proteins and put hundreds of them in a membrane. There are two ways to record data from a nanopore. One is the minion, which I'm drawing right now, which is a small portable device that can plug into your computer via USB. The other is the gridion that can be stacked and can hold much larger experiments. The minion only has one plate for microwells versus the gridion that has multiple plates. A membrane is layered on top of each microwell plate with the hundreds of nanopores. Each microwell has a sensor chip. This sensor chip records the disturbance in the electrical current and sends it to a computer for a scientist to analyze. The pores are able to sequence DNA and RNA. An enzyme helps direct the DNA to the nanopores, then proceeds to unzip the DNA due to its double helix structure. One strand passes through, followed by the other, to create a unique disturbance. Nanopores are also able to sequence microRNA. MicroRNA are the small strands that are altered by diseases. With the help of a specifically designed probe, it pulls the strand towards the nanopore. The probe passes till the barcode-like structure is red, then detaches for the RNA to pass through too. Proteins are too large to pass through the nanopore, so they use the help of optimers. The optimer attaches to the protein and directs it to the nanopore till it touches enough to create a disturbance in the electrical current. The aptipore detaches, then proceeds through the nanopore as the protein is released. Small molecules are the easiest to record because they are small enough and simple enough to pass through the nanopore by itself. Because of the wide range of uses of the nanopore, there's many applications to the world, like personalized medicine, diagnostics, drug development, life science research, and security and defense. It's all